God is. Father in heaven, Lord in heaven. Show this man what time it is. <laughs> Show him who the big boss really is sitting on the throne. Now, therefore, Lord, our God, I beseech you that thou uh, save us out of his hand, and, and that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Then Hezekiah, excuse me, then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, here come the prophet of God, Isaiah. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. God sent him a messenger right away as soon as he finished his prayer. See how fast God responded to him. When you in tune with God, when you don't turn from false religion, when you're walking in God's ways, his precepts, his commandments, you get God's ear. That's why we're reading it. When you take your mess, whatever the world is bringing against you, and drop it into the, into the house of the Lord in front of God and make a prayer like this, you get God's ear. But you see, the pre what was preceded for him to get in this, he turned his back on the on the Babylon and paganism. And many of you have, and you ain't going to get that power here until you do. Don't be enough to see God's not a mark. Can't fool with him. And you can't hold the devil's hand and hold God's hand. I'm talking to worldly Christians right now. Thinking they're going to get some power with God. And all they're doing is spinning their wheel in the same circumstance they've been in. And ain't, God ain't going to believe it. Until you do what Hezekiah did. Start turning your back on this world. And this world's religion. And the false prophet and the Antichrist that runs this, or spirit of the Antichrist that runs this world. Then, then did Isaiah the son of Amos and Hezekiah said, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. The, the virgin, the daughter of Zion, have despised thee, and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed, and against whom thou hast exalted thy voice, and lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel? Blaspheme thou. And now you got God's attention. By thy messenger thou hast reproached the Lord, and hath said with the multitude of thy chariots, I am come up to the height of the mountains of the sides of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedar trees thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof, and will enter into the lodging of his borders and into the forest of Carmel. I have digged and, and drunk strange water, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of the siege places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and in the ancient times that I have formed it, how have I brought it to pass, that thou shouldest be to lay waste fenced cities upon ruinous heaps? Therefore their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the grass of the housetops, and as corn blasted before it is grown up. But I know thy bone, and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy rage against me. God speaking. So I know you, you you pointed your finger in my face and told me, and defied me. God said, I'm, now you have got me involved. Because thy rage against me, and thy tumult has come up into mine ears. You reach God's ears. When you can be so vile with your hatred toward God that you get his attention or God's service.
because thy rage against me and thy tumult has come up into mine ear. Therefore I will put my hook in thy nose and my bridle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way which you came. God said, I'm going to turn you around. And this shall be a sign unto thee. Ye shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves. And in the second year, that which springeth of the same. And in the third year, sow ye and reap, and the plant vineyards, and eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take good root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of the Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, shall do this. Therefore thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come up into the city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same way shall he return, and shall not come into the city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city. It's God bossing up, the big G. Saying, I'm going to defend this city now. Now you done pissed me off and drove my name through the mud. I'm going to show you something, little man. Who the boss really? I love when God, I'm sorry, sorry, it's just that side of me. I love when God stands up and gets those. They get on their high horse and God knocks them off. It reminds me, I'm the boss running this earth. I love when he gets involved in time and ch chastises me. And I will save it for my own sake. He said, I'm going to save, defend Jerusalem for my own sake. And my, for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass that that night, I pay close attention to it. He's talking about the power of prayer with uh, Hezekiah. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians and hundreds and fourscore and five thousand, a hundred and eighty-five thousand. One angel. Now, in the Bible, sometimes God, like with, in the, in, with Joshua, showed up, and God was talking, and he came like an angel in disguise, and Joshua was dealing with the Lord himself, with God himself, in the form of an angel. I wouldn't be surprised right here that God took this person and showed up like in a, in a, in a, it's called a, an um, epiphany and showed up in angelic form and wiped this, these being out themselves. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smoked in the camp of Assyria and hundred and four score and five thousand. And when they rose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. God wiped them out. Love it. Love this word. God killing our enemy. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt in them, just like God said he would. And it came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nishra, his God, that Andromelach and Shazer, his son, his own sons, smote him with the sword. You think that what God said? You think God said came to pass? He said, I'm going to put hooks in jaws and you're bring you and so one of your own family members is going to kill you. Don't want to trifle with God. My God, nobody more gangster than my God. And he's the real God, God. And it came to pass as he was worshiping in the house of Nerach his God that Andromelech and Sharazar, his son, smote him with the sword, killed him. While he was worshiping in his church, killed him in church. 
And they escaped into the land of Armenia and Asherdon, and his sons reigned in his stead. Now, I'll show you one more thing, and we're done with it. A power of prayer with Hezekiah. And in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. He was on his deathbed. Watch this. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thy house in order, for thou shalt die, and not live. All right, time to go, guys. We all got a clock set. Now I got a clock set. You got a clock. Well, God said, okay, it's time to go home. Your, your time's up. Brother Jay, time to go. Well, get your house in order here. You got all your business handled right there. Got your... <laughs> I ain't got much to give anyway, but you got your, <laughs> you got your paperwork for what's left. For your family, everything's straight. <laughs> Get your house in order, man. You're out of here, Brother Jack. Yeah, what, what has a God do? What would you do? If God sent a message and you said, okay, time to die. How would you react? With death is no big deal with a Christian, first of all. The Bible says that we'd rather be uh, past this life and be you know, be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That's what the scriptures say. We'd rather be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Death is no big deal, Christian. We should be we should be martyrs for Christ. <clears throat> That's where you get the word witness from, martyrs. Dead men walking. We should be dead men walking for Christ. We're already dead. That's what the cross is for. We die to your way. We come alive to what God wants, so we're already dead. And death is no big deal with us. If you're a true Christian, Paul, he chastised the Christians. said, what are you crying and mourning for? For brothers and sisters die in the Lord. They're going to heaven. They're better off than you here. That's what, set, that's what separates the world from the faith. Those that really believe in eternity. But as opposed to those that's trying to get it all down here. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet uh, Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him. This is a... Uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall. This is Hezekiah. No sooner did he got this bad news, what he do? Watch this. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, this man can pray. This is a praying man here. That's why we're studying this. I need to come up short in the prayer and the praise department sometimes. Well, I'm going through my thing. But look at this guy here. He, he's the, the band leader right here. This guy, what you call the mascot. He's the mascot of prayer. This is what I'm about. I love I'm learning from this guy. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. I remember it was an issue I was dealing with where I was dealing with an enemy that was through, uh, you could say, cunning means for threatening street priest ministry livelihood. And I said a prayer similar to this year, and God removed that enemy fast and opened up the door of blessing even faster. And I got some emergency prayers that God answered right away. <laughs> I can't say, but normally God's clock, he doesn't have a clock with that's the problem. That's why me and God clash a lot of times. Because he don't have a clock. But he always shows up and shows out on time. And never my time, ever. But he has come through. Like Seattle School was in some cases where I made some emergency prayers and they just answered right away. And I praised him for it. I said, well, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. He came through right away. But most of the time, it takes a long time uh, for him to respond to Brother Jack. <laughs> but he has come through with some emergency prayers in the past. It opens up emergency doors. Now, this is this guy here. He's, he's, he got a death sentence hanging over. Let's we'll see how he handles it. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth. Don't forget, God, I... I dot my eyes and cross my T's with 
I did what you told me to do, God. I put away idols. I put away, uh, I turned my back on the hilly days. I have done a lot. I gave up a lot for you, God. <laughs> you turned to your word and, and teaching does say the word, Lord. We kept the faith. Now, I need something from you, my Father in heaven. It's time you come through. I've been faithful in service to you for decades now. And went against the grain of the uh, false prophets in this Antichrist age. I beseech thee, O Lord. Remember now how I have walked before thee. It's good to remind God that. You know, all, I, all I gave up for you, uh, all the exes that you tried to drag me away from you, I, I turned my back on. Remember that? Uh, forsaken homes and forsaken this and lands for you. <laughs> forsaken uh, fame and fortune down here. It could have been on that road several times for forsook that. Didn't sell out to Hollywood for you. Remember that, Lord? I could have sold out a few times. Didn't do it. Didn't pervert the gifts you gave me for the world and Satan and his crew. Remember that, Lord. Come and see you, Lord. I love this prayer. Remember how I've done that before? How I've walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart. And have done that which is good in our sight. And Hezekiah wept so. It's just good old fashioned, good old fashioned repentance. He's bawling like, God, come on. You got to be kidding me. You going to take me out after I've done all this for you? Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father have heard thy prayer, and I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. <laughs> How many of you sitting up there suffering, been suffering for years from some debilitating disease or whatever? Then God ain't answered prayer yet. The answer is right away. <laughs> what separates Hezekiah from you? I hope you rewind his message and find out. I have heard thy prayer and have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee on the third day. Three is the number of divine manifestation. And thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. After I heal you, go to church. And I will add to thy days 15 years. And I will deliver thee this city out of thy hand, of the king of Assyria. And I will fend this city for my own sake, and for my servant, David, my, my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, take a lump. Can you imagine this man just got 15 years added to his life when God said, your clock's up, time to punch it. Time to punch that clock. And it's over. It's a wrap for you. Figs. And they, shall, and they took and laid it up on the boil, and he recovered. God used something simple to heal him, some figs. And he took and laid up on it the boil, and, it was, and he recovered. I always say, God got a remedy for everything, for every ailment in, in uh, his herbs, fruit, plants, some roots. It's up to us to find it out. Cancer has an answer for every ailment, I believe, in God's nature somewhere. And that's the point I'm making. Now, you see now Hezekiah immediately got a response from God. Even with a death sentence hanging over. So I hope you are learning something. There's something you Hezekiah did. And how he walked faithfully with God with a pure heart. And cut off all the idols. And false things in his life. And I've been doing it over the years. And one by one I've been knocking the false idols and things and I root them up and smash them in pieces and get them up out of my life. False people, too. <laughs> false Christians, false everything. Falsehood, period. And <laughs> removing them, moving the liars, everything. And as you do that, you get closer and closer and closer to God's heart. And God is, uh, will bend the ear and listen to what you got to say, for you know, whatever petition you're making. And I hope you learned something about the power of prayer in Hezekiah. And also learn to not to rob God either. 
the tithes of the Lord. It's here by teaching on tithes, first fruit, and the Baptist box. I'm the one that taught you Galatians 6, 6 says, give. If I taught you spiritual things, no big deal, I'll receive material things. You know, get your soul to heaven. That's what my job is, is under shepherd. So I think a little change should be worth the teaching. That's what the Bible says. Galatians 6, 6. All right. I hope you learned the power of prayer. Good day. Good evening. Good night to you around the world. May you go in faith in Jesus' name.